All right, this video is about equilibrium versus temperature. We can actually quantitate the differences here. I'm Dr. Ryan Hayes from Andrews University, and we're going to learn about the Van Hoff equation. That equation uh, is used to relate the relationship between the equilibrium constant and temperature. We've talked about it before, uh, but now we're going to see the quantitation uh, of it. And what you need to know is uh, usually the problems are given with a couple different temperatures, T1, T2, and then an equilibrium constant for one of those temperatures. You also need to know the enthalpy of the chemical reaction, and R is the gas constant uh, at 8.314 joules per mole uh, Kelvin. And uh, we've been in We've been through these equations before, but uh, maybe you haven't, we'll work one in this video. All right, so uh, what is this equation? Where did it come from? Well, this is very similar to some other equations, uh, one of them being the Arrhenius equation, which looks almost exactly like it, except for the capital Ks are replaced with, uh, or the in the Arrhenius, they have rate constant Ks, little Ks, and you have activation energy instead of enthalpy. Everything else is the same. Uh, where did it come from? Well, it really comes from uh, thinking about the relationship between uh, free energy, delta G equals uh, enthalpy minus T delta S, um, the entropy. If you replace the, uh, the free energy term with minus RT ln of K, then you can get minus RT ln of K is equal to the entropy, enthalpy minus T delta S. And uh, then you can make the substitution and divide both sides by minus RT and simplify from there. And uh, where the Van Hoff comes from is taking two of these points and subtracting them. And I kind of work it through here. You don't need to derive it, so it's not that critical. But for some, it helps to see where it came from and how it all works out. And so I have this here, and you can see how that uh, works. Pause the video and look at this screen here to see how the sides are simplified in order to get to the Van Hoff equation. All right, but what does the problem look like that you may be working on with this particular one? Uh, here's, a, here's a particular problem. The equilibrium constant Kp for the following reaction is 0.636 at 600 Kelvin. The reaction is given. The enthalpy for this reaction is a positive 108 kilojoules. What is the Equilibrium constant at 508 Kelvin. Well, how are we supposed to know we use the Van Hoff for this? There are some dead giveaways here. The clues are enthalpy is given, uh, temperature at two different temperatures, and uh, an equilibrium constant at one of those temperatures. So that's those are the clues. They don't have to tell you to go use the Van Hoff equation. Those are, those are it. So now we can use the equation and start plugging in the numbers here. So we're going to do that. So I plugged in the 0.636 for K2. It doesn't matter uh, which one you used it for. I used it for K2. You could have used it for K1. Just be consistent. So in K2, I put 0.636. And for the temperature 2, I put the 600 Kelvin. Temperature 1, 518. And then my K1, I'm going to solve for. Substituted in the enthalpy at 108,000 joules. Make sure we're in the same units. And then don't forget your negative sign. And then here's the number in units for the uh, R constant. My joules uh, per mole cancel out now. You'd say, well, they didn't give me joules per mole in the enthalpy, but that's understood to be the same thing there. So those will cancel out. And eventually my uh, temperatures will cancel out as well. And on the right-hand side, uh, I've worked out uh, the equilibrium constant. I'm sorry, on the right-hand side, uh, it turns out to be 3.427. And then uh, there's a little awkward way to do it, but uh, so I kind of do it piecemeal. I, I did the delta H divided by R, that gave me 1299. And then I did the 1 over 600 minus 1 over 518 and gave me this in the parentheses. And so the whole right side simplifies the 3.427. Then I'm going to use the E function to undo the natural log. And then I'm going to, so I'm going to take E to the 3.427. You'd say, well, is that a positive number? Well, the negative um, uh, in front of the enthalpy and then the temperatures gave me a negative number. So two negatives make a positive. 
So now it becomes 0.636 divided by K1 equals 30.784. You should follow along in your own calculator and make sure you know how to do these problems. Solving for K1, I get 0 0.0207. Now this is where most students stop and they'd say, yay, I got the number, go get your green check mark, go get your answer, get your points, we're done. No, you should think about your answer. What do you mean? Well, let's think about it. We started off with um, K1 is 0 0.0207 at 518 Kelvin. Temperature two uh, was at 0.636 at 600 Kelvin. So as the temperature increased, so did the equilibrium. But why is that? Well, isn't it always that way? If you increase the temperature, you increase the equilibrium constant. Uh, 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 that's not the way it works. You need to know from Le Chatelet principle that when you have an endothermic reaction, because it was a positive 108 kilojoules, that when you heat an endothermic reaction, the equilibrium constant increases. The opposite is true for an exothermic. So by pausing and thinking about it, we got to reflect on the Le Chatelet principle and go back and think about uh, the relationship between heating a chemical reaction and its endothermicity. Is it endo or exothermic? Because that changes the equilibrium constant. So some big learning principles here on temperature relating to equilibrium constant. So we got all these great things to think about. And then at, the last thing is, man, look at all the similarities between the Van Hoff the Arrhenius, and then the Clausius Clapeyron. Same tools to solve these problems, same looking problems in all of these different temperatures, different equilibrium constants or rate constant or pressure. So a lot of similarities in nature um, and how things behave. Pretty, pretty impressive and pretty interesting. Look for the patterns, they're there. It may not seem like it always. Keep learning, stay safe and uh, Hopefully you learned a few things about chemistry in this video.